Well, let's get started. Our first question is from Jeff. And Jeff says, during podcast number 140, you were counseling a former Marine and recommended him to doing a goblet squat at the end of each set of 15 swings. Other than adding more work, is there some kind of benefit from doing this? I have re-listened that segment a couple of times, but I didn't hear any explanation as to why. At almost 59 years, two weeks away, I'm up for anything that will improve performance and or avoid reduce risk of injury. Well, that's a good question. And it was one of those things, Jeff, it's, I think what it, if you asked me this question like once a week for like a year, I think I'd give you 365, I checked that, 52 good answers a year. Uh, the first is that when people are doing swings, I like them to make sure they have nothing but control as they go to those last reps. So doing that last rep, we have to do that, we call it a two-hand clean. I got this from Mike, the term from Mike Krifka. On that last swing, you have to slow your tempo down, pop it up, and now you're controlling the bell. And that's really important, I think. I think it's really important when you do ballistic work that you are in control of everything. So that, okay, so like number one is it ensures that you finish with appropriate tempo, appropriate hit, and still have control. Number two ties right in. So the swing is maximal hip bend and appropriate knee bend. And the squat is maximal hip bend and maximal knee bend. So they're on opposite ends of what I call the hip uh, displacement continuum. And once again, if you ever use that phrase, remember, it's not displacement. It's uh, when my dog uh, Lexi died, she had dysplasia. And and so hip displacement became a kind of an inward in our coaching staff is not really a joke, but that's, that's how it. And so if you ever see someone talk about the hip displacement continuum and not reference my dog Lexi, you know, they're just stealing uh, the work offline and pretending that there's theirs. But so what's nice about going swing and any goblet squats after is I think it reminds the person of this is a swing, a hinge, and that is a squat. Uh, the next one is what you'll notice when you do a lot of um, kettlebell swings is that the ab wall goes, for every time you go boom, the ab wall bites down and counters the weight. Boom, boom. And and if done correctly, the ab wall becomes part of that whole chain to stop the kettlebell from you know flying away. And I like my athletes to, to do a vertical plank, pull down and throw it back. So when you do 15 swings, you know, you've lit up the, the, the ab wall 15 times in that kind of sneeze position. Mm. When you do the goblet squat, you, you, you do what I call anaconda strength. You build up that inner, inner tube of your body the, and you tighten and brace everything as you go up and down. So what's nice about that is you're giving your hips, your ab wall, and I, I mean, you can just keep running with it, your spinal rectors and everything else. You're giving them two sides of the training. Uh, the other reason I really like, I, and, and you'll notice a lot of my workouts go swing, goblet squat, and then either a push-up position plank or a push-up. I mean, a lot of my workouts have that three part. The most famous is a humane burpee, but there's many other variations. Is what, what we're doing in that is we're changing levels just a little bit. Except levels, the floor is a level, my chair here is I'm at a level, standing's a level. Now, obviously, when you swing and you goblet squat, you're you're standing from both of them. But in the way I I look at it, you're doing two different movements. Now, if I, I should have said always do a set of 15, uh, follow it with a goblet squat, and then get on the floor and get back up somehow, because I think that is that is just as valuable. Uh to what we're trying to do. And you'll notice if you have a heart rate monitor that the heart rate goes up when you get up and down off the ground, which is, I think, just fascinating. So uh, there you go. I mean, that's a pretty basic uh, review, but but that's how uh, I see things. And like I said, you know, Jeff, <laughs> we'll be sitting down in a week or two and you'll say, well, I tried it and then I discovered this. And I'll be like, oh yeah, that. Um, if all you did was swings, goblet squats, and a either a press or a push-up, uh, you'd, you'd be okay. That's that's a pretty good combination. Great question, Jeff. Way to kick off the, uh, our week.